So in the last few videos, we've looked at some examples of, of functions that were continuous, mostly on their domains. We wrote down intervals where they were continuous. Um, we saw what it means to be continuous. And, and so just as a reminder, a function f is continuous at some point c. If the limit as x approaches c exists and is equal to the value of the function at that point. Right? So this is our definition for continuity at a point. And so now the question is, what happens if that fails? Can we say anything about the function if, if it's not continuous? So if this definition is not satisfied, what can we say? Um, and sometimes we can't say much, but there are certain cases where um, the function fails to be continuous in, in sort of predictable, understandable ways. Um, the kind of easiest one to handle is what's called a removable discontinuity. So in a removable discontinuity, what this means is that the limit exists but it doesn't equal f of c. And it might be that, that f of c is in fact undefined. Um, or maybe it is defined but it's defined differently. So we might have, we might have a graph that looks something like this. So maybe we have a function where there's a hole in the graph at x equals c. So the limit exists because the function is defined everywhere near the point. We have a, we have a well-defined y value that is approaching from either side. Um, but f of c is undefined. Or maybe f of c is defined, but it doesn't agree with the limit. Um, so this is called a removable discontinuity, and I guess the removable means in the sense that if we just redefine it at that one point, the function does become continuous. So it's, it's pretty easy to fix in this case. Um, the second type is called a jump discontinuity. Right. So all other types of discontinuities are, are going to occur because the limit fails to exist. In a jump discontinuity, the limit fails to exist in a fairly simple way. Um, the limit fails to exist because although the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit are both defined, they're not equal. Okay. So we've seen examples of this with, uh, with things like step functions, with piecewise defined functions, where the left-hand limit has one value, the right-hand limit has another value, they don't agree, and so the function is discontinuous. Right? So with a jump discontinuity, you expect to see a graph that looks something like this, where there's a jump in the y value from one side to the other. Okay, so the name makes sense. Um, the third type that we can get something of a handle on can be called an infinite discontinuity. So an infinite discontinuity is going to be a discontinuity that occurs because our function has a vertical asymptote. Right? So in this case, either the left-hand limit is infinite, well, plus infinity or minus infinity, or the right-hand limit, or both. Okay? And we know what this type of discontinuity looks like, right? This is something where we have that vertical asymptote in the graph of our function. So the function might be going, maybe it's going off to plus infinity from one side and minus infinity from the other side. Um, 
This is also a type of discontinuity, which occurs uh, because the function becomes unbounded because we have that vertical asymptote. Um, there are other ways that a function could fail to be continuous, right? Um, there are lots of ways that the limit could fail to exist because you have some particularly badly behaved function. Um, but we don't look at too many of those in Calc 1, so most of the time if your function fails to be continuous, it's going to fall into one of these three categories.